Good afternoon, Annie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. I am good. And by I, I mean, I am Megan Holmes and I am sitting here at my shop, the Needlepoint Clubhouse, just outside of the city of St. Louis, Missouri. And um, if you're just joining us for the first time, I'll also mention that this podcast is recorded. Uh, we try to do two a month. And by we, I mean my pal, Melissa McLeod, who owns the Wool and the Floss up in Gross Point, Michigan, which I know my pal over here. Who are you? Hello, I'm Annie Zygman of Ziggy Stitches. And Annie, I know you have been to Melissa's store before, and yeah. I also happen to know that you have a special place in your heart for um, the state of Michigan. So we will get to that in a minute. But mm -hmm. first, I want to start by saying um, welcome to Annie Zygman of Ziggy Stitches. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And you know, we probably could have done this in person. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and that is because Annie does hail from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, yep. And she okay. is sitting in, I believe, her boyfriend's office, not yeah. her studio. <laughs> no, my studio. I, you know what? I actually cleaned my studio for this, and it looks really cute right now. Maybe we'll go and I'll give you a tour. But it's the lighting was too bad. We had to move. <laughs> and so that begs the question: How do you design in a poorly lit area? Come on, girl. How do you paint? How do you see? It, honestly, I could see better. <laughs> <laughs> I could see better. I have a ton of lamps. Okay. Um, yeah, lots of lamps, but the natural light isn't amazing, but I did just wallpaper it. So that's, Ooh, I love a good wallpaper. Oh yeah. It's so fun. So let's back up a little bit. So Annie, um, I know that Annie is from St. Louis. I know that Annie has been stitching for a little bit, but what I don't think I know is when did you start stitching needlepoint canvases? I wish I had an exact date in my brain, but I don't. So I, I remember seeing needlepoint for the first time when I was young my mom actually stitched when she was in college and then picked it up a little bit when I was probably really young three or four because I remember seeing pieces of needlepoint like half worked on in her closet because she would hide it from our cats <laughs> oh smart and Very smart so I remember very distinctly seeing those pieces. And then there were always pieces of needlepoint out in my great grandma's home as well. She was a ah. huge teacher in St. Louis, actually. And so I'm going to interrupt you for just a yeah, half second. Yeah. I don't have any idea how your mother would possibly have had time to stitch because people may not know that Annie is actually a ziglet. Yeah. <laughs> <Now you know. laughs> Annie is a triplet. And yes. I just think, holy moly, I can hardly handle two children at two different ages, but your mother is saintly. <laughs> she really is. Um, I think that is why there were a handful of needlepoint canvases that were started and never completed. <laughs> you um, to focus actually, on something yeah. other than the children. Uh -huh. and, uh, I think that was attempting to be a stress relief for her. And I don't think it was, I don't think it got quite there yet. Um, but I actually, you know what? I, you helped me finish one of these pieces, but I found an old needlepoint project of hers that was not completed and I completed it and finished it. And it's now a pillow sitting in my office. That. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, so did your mom teach you to stitch? No, I kind of taught myself to my recollection. I stitched a little bit in high school and college. I made just, you know, like the normal keychains that you see for all of your sorority friends, stuff like that. Yep. So I made a handful of those and kind of just taught myself having no clue what a tent stitch or basket weave or anything was. And I was truly flying by the seat of my pants. Like talk about a bad back canvas. It was all over the place. <laughs> um, well, that's all right because yeah. um, there so, were no needlepoint police, right? Exactly, no rules. So it turned out great. Um, and then I, in college, I was actually in a pretty bad car accident. And no I was, yeah. So I feel, I'm very, very lucky to be, um, where I am now, I easily could have lost my legs. Um, and we weren't sure if I was going to walk again, all these things. So I was bedridden for a little bit. And because of that, I was going stir crazy and needed oh, something sure. with my hands. So I picked up stitching again and stitched. I can't even tell you how many keychains Cause at this point I thought key fobs were the only thing you could stitch. Right. <laughs> Right. So I've had so many of them uh, for my friends and coworkers. And then 
fast forward a few years when the pandemic hit and uh, I'm an actor as well. I'm sure we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But I was living in New York, everyone on Broadway lost their jobs, theater shut down. So I then had a lot of time on my hands and I was super stressed. So I needed something kind of to calm the anxious attitudes down. And I remember going back to a stressful time in my life, which was the accident and how Needlepoint really helped with that. So I kind of picked it up again. And here we are. Well, I was going to say, it's like, it's like the Phoenix rising from the ashes, right? Because um, two times it it kind of brought you to that. But um, I want to back up just another second, because you did go to school at the University of Michigan, correct? No, actually, I did. The rest of your family did. You went to the University of Miami. I'm sorry. I went to the other UM. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, Yes. So I went to UM, which I feel to this day so blessed to be going there or to have went there. I miss it every day. You know, it's it's not hard to miss palm trees every day. Um, <laughs> very I, I don't lucky. know how I forgot that because my husband also went to the U. Yes. And, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, but, but you do have family in Michigan, correct? Oh, yes. So my first words were actually mama, dada, and go blue. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, diehard Michigan Wolverines fans. My grandparents live there. My aunts and uncle met there. My parents met there. Um, I currently have a ton of cousins who go there. Okay. It was like a family controversy when my sisters and I did not go there. <laughs> did all three of your sisters go to Miami? No, all or, three not- different schools. Okay. Yes, okay. which was really hard, but awesome because it was the first time I think that we really missed each other. So it brought us closer together. That's great. That's good. Okay. So I was, I wanted to establish the co- the collegiate thing. So where, what degree did you get? So I have my degree in musical theater performance. Okay. So then, so I, I, sorry if I'm being too um, familiar, oh. but I happen to know Annie <laughs> relatively well. And mm-hmm. so um, help us with the, the teaching and the acting and the, so how, how, how did those two converge? Because um, sure. you're now, um, teaching drama, correct? Or theater? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you nailed it. Okay. I wear many hats. I don't sleep a lot. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of jobs. <laughs> Who needs I sleep? I'll sleep when I'm dead. Um, but so I am my main full-time profession that I've had the longest in my life is acting. And I act mainly on stage opposed to TV film. I have been a musical theater performer since I was nine years old. It is my favorite thing in the world, my biggest passion. And I got my degree in that from the University of Miami and graduated college, moved to New York City, was ready to do the whole big shebang, was there for a handful of months and then COVID hit. So that was rough timing. (laughs) Um, But again, everybody's job was in turmoil and life was in turmoil at that point. So at least if I was having a rough transition, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just me. We were all kind of going through it together and having to deal with that learning curve. But when I lost my job is when I started needle pointing. I actually um, came home to St. Louis from New York to help my family out for a little bit. And I was stitching and I needed some supplies. Michael's was closed. And because Michael's craft store was closed, I went across the street to the <laughs> house That's right. and I ran into Megan and she saw what I was stitching, which happened to be one of my designs that I literally scribbled. Yep. The, uh, um, here, isn't it right, this one? That the, yep. Right there. You got it. <laughs> and I uh, said, whose canvas is that? That's hilarious. I said, thanks. It was mine. And I scribbled it in pencil on plain canvas that I found, I think on Amazon and was, you know, the rest is history. Megan is the one who pushed me to start. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, but yeah. The, um, was this, they, I, if I recall, this image was out in the ether because of the musical, not because of the movie, right? This- so yeah. Yeah. So I designed, that's my image, but yeah. Um, so that, yes, that is in both the film and the musical, 
but you I were doing it. Go ahead. Yes, because of the musical. So right. a lot of my a lot of my original designs and future designs, Ooh. market coming up, are <laughs> um, Broadway inspired and Broadway themed because that is my first true love. Um, so that's yeah, I was really stitching things at the time and designing things at the time that I was missing and craving and really wanted back into my life. So I was stitching all of my favorite shows, which now are so fun and they they are my personal pieces I'm hoping to bring some of those to the future Ziggy Stitches collection oh, as good. well as the general theater pieces that I have um but yeah so, so, you, so I'm sorry I'm gonna interrupt so do you remember when when you brought this in was that pre-pandemic you were getting ready to go back or was it pandemic and you no, were that trying was to get back to New York that was pandemic and I was trying to go back to New York okay, okay. I came from New York back home to St. Louis with a backpack thinking I would be here for two weeks and I was here for five months, <laughs> um, which was wild. Kind of, kind of the age old story for a lot of people actually, sad, Definitely. sadly. <laughs> and um, yeah, still paying rent in New York and dealing with all this oh. stuff was, yeah, it was a wild, wild time. Uh, I eventually made it back to New York, uh, booked a few gigs here and there. The second wave kind of hit um, we all shut down again <laughs> and I'm laughing because if I don't, then, you know, it's, it's sad. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. it was so hard. It really was. Um, the community was just really heartbroken for a while, but shut down again, um, about year and a half full-time round later, I moved fully back to St. Louis and I was helping my dad at the time with some health issues. So mm -hmm. it actually, I mean, worked out really well and I was glad I was be able to be home. Um, and then fast forward again, a few months when I was doing Ziggy Stitches full time, theater really started to pick back up, which was amazing. Right. I went back to New York for a summer and then I was on tour. I was on the road for a while. And that can was, say, can you say what that role was? Yeah, I was playing Sister Mary Patrick in Sister Act in right. New York City. And then <laughs> I was on tour. Um, if you're familiar with the children's book, Junie B. Jones, mm -hmm. I was in Junie B. Jones the musical, which, I mean, that was a so hoot. Yeah. They're my favorite children's books. So to be able to do that um, was just, it was so wild and so cool. And it actually ended up being a perfect segue in my life without me knowing uh, because I'm now an elementary school teacher. <laughs> So good. So good. So, so many crazy. Yeah. Full circle. So moments. at some point during that, um, kind of time in your life. So you had, so this wasn't your only, this, this, by the way, this says what, like it's hard. It's a reference to the, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Reese Witherspoon. Uh, Legally Blue. Thank you. My goodness. That was escape escaping me. Um, but so you, um, you had, you had a few designs I remember and you'd bring them in and say, how do you think, or I'm going to do this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Keep going, keep going. So you, for a while sort of, um, went out on your own and you were like, I can do this. I'm going to sell my own designs. And then at a certain point you decided to kind of focus a little more on your, your other careers, your other kind of the hats you were wearing. And, um, you were, I think very, happily surprised that you were able to, um, I don't know how you, be included under the the umbrella of the Kansas City Needlepoint Designers. Am I, yes. am I right about that? I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. 100% correct. I, yes, I did Ziggy on my own full-time for a year and a half, I think okay. it was. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, if you would have asked me even, you know, five years ago, one day, if I would own a business, I would laugh in your face and be like, absolutely not. Not me. Um, not me. And so that whole process and learning curve was just wild and amazing. And I'm so grateful to have had it. And when theater was picking back up, I've been lucky enough that Ziggy was also really picking up and growing. And I could not keep up with both at the same time. Right. So I, I mean, cause I was painting and shipping canvases 10 plus hours a day, mm. nonstop. It was my, I was still with my dad at the time and he would say, okay, bye, have fun in the dungeon. See you in three days. Uh <laughs> yeah. Working on the sewing machine or at my painting desk for so long, I wouldn't see him. Um, but when everything was picking back up, KCN and I kind of got together and they are now, or I am now represented by KCN Designers, an incredible wholesale company of 
wonderful women who truly it has been the most amazing experience working with them because I wouldn't be able to do all of the other passions that I have in life. If it wasn't for them, Ziggy would have completely dissipated. Um, but even if that wasn't the case, the market that they can reach and the audience that they have is so incredible. And the women are constantly inspiring me to be the best version of myself that I can be just because they are so talented and constantly cranking out some amazing things. So it's, I feel very, very lucky to be a part of their umbrella. As yeah, you it's, it's, it's a fantastic company. You should be proud of that. And in fact, I happened, and this was not on purpose at all, but I have, well, it's on purpose that I'm sitting in front of this wall. It was not on purpose that we had the KCN trunk show yeah. and yeah. Ziggy, the, it, that actually just worked out um, in yeah. our favor, oh, but good. I'm sitting in front of this huge wall where um, the uh, collective of artists are represented from KCN. Um, but I also happen to be sitting in front of a lot of Annie's designs. And I think I actually also talk you into doing this one. <laughs> So I think so. I saw a few versions <laughs> or it was of a version of that. I said, we need yeah. some more baby stuff. What do you think? Yeah. And so it's really fun to see these all together, but I, I'm, I'm not taking any credit for your, no. um, oh, but you know what? I also have a pe my favorite piece that I stitched of yours. I'm staring at it over Ooh. here on, on yes. a wall. I, I should have someone grab that for me here in a yeah, second, but, but anyway, um, so let's talk a little bit about how inspired your, your designs are. So you mentioned, um, you mentioned theater, of course. In fact, we just sold Theater Kid today, which is- Yes, that's one of my favorite ones. That was back here behind me. Um, you've got a very whimsical way about you, a very great, a, a great sense of humor. Um, so talk a little bit more about some of the theme. I, I could say it, but I, I think we'd rather hear sure. it from you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, with my designs, I really try to be a few things. I try to be bold and colorful. I try to be humorous. Like you said, I try to be whimsical and things that honestly bring me joy so much. If I wouldn't want to stitch it myself, then I don't want to design it. Um, and I feel like that has been such a good way to connect with my audience because uh, my I feel like my customer, I could say my client, uh, we share a lot of the same passions and a lot of things interest us in the same way or make us giggle in the same way. Right. So designing for things that I love, I feel like has really helped with the connection to the things that the market is going to love at the same time. But yeah, I'm a, with being an actor, I'm a, I'm a total goofball and on stage and off stage. That's what I go to most is comedic, uh, comedic roles and comedic art. And that is really what I love designing for as well. Yeah. So, um, theater is a strong theme. Unfortunately, we've already sold, um, uh, the better on Broadway, which just turned into a clutch, which is gorgeous. We've sold, um, the, uh, Broadway sort of, um, eyeglass case that looks like the top of a playbill. I mentioned theater kid. Um, but after, and, and by the way, I'm trying to be better descriptive about my language. We've been, we were doing this podcast for so long, the pointing it out podcast on YouTube, and we are now on, um, audio uh, platform as well. And so I'm trying to do the best I can, not just assuming everyone can see what we're talking about. So bear with me in my descriptors. Oh, but, good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so theater is a, is a strong influence in the collection, but, um, crime scenes or crime yeah. shows <laughs> also seem to be a theme. Um, and oh. this was one that Annie brought in. And I think when she brought it in, I said, I need that. I'm going to stitch that for my husband. Yeah. Um, and if you recognize this, uh, what it looks like is one of those old fashioned um, uh, ransom letters, the letters, yeah, <laughs> where the person would go to like in newspapers and magazines and clip different letters yeah, together, their handwriting and not get caught. Yeah, I said, Annie, that's so clever. And this is really a stash buster. So it says crime show junkie. Okay. My husband, I always joke that I feel like my demise is coming because when I walk in the house, most times my husband is usually either watching some sort of a crime show or World War II Nazi stuff. And I'm like, this, first of all, this is very depressing. And second of all, like he must be trying to come for me, but and, and I'm just kidding. Keep one eye open at night. Oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, uh, so crime show junkie is darling. And what I did is I made it look like it was on newspaper print yes. in the background. And this is in our basement. Most of the time I brought it in because of the trunk show and absolutely love this piece. I'm obsessed with that finish. I need to, I still have not finished mine, which is crazy. Cause it's truly one of my favorite things 
I've designed and I, I'm obsessed with what you did. I need to copy it because oh, it's, it's so fun. It was, it, it was a really a fun stitch because you could just go in your stash and grab all these different yes, colors and totally. textures and sparkles. It's such and a good way. cluster for that. But then I, and again, if I'm speaking on a turn, stop me, but I feel like that was sort of one of the first crime show canvases that and the law and order one, maybe. Thanks. I think so. Um, dun, 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 for, me, so for sure, funny. but I think so. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed with law and order all versions, original recipe, SVU, criminal intent, organized crime. I mean, d just stop <laughs> here. It's I'm, it's so, an unhealthy obsession. Um, this one is <laughs> a little like newer, Murder Doc O'Clock. Um, the other one that, so this looks like a television and it says murder document. So murder doc o'clock, I think it was like a murder documentary, yep. um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. inspired canvas. The other one I'm thinking of, sorry, I'm turning my head uh, is, magnifying. um, is the, the home with the, with the, um, magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. What does that say on it? It says stay at home detective. Right. So those people, that's what I call gonna... myself, <laughs> yeah, right? There's a few others, but so, so I see, so that's a theme for sure. Yep. Yep. Um, and then, uh, there's Hanukkah some, is a big theme. Hanukkah is a theme for you. Your, um, collaboration with Lara mm -hmm. rock, uh, the pink menorah is a big seller for us, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love think? puns. Puns are a big theme yes. in my line. I will always have something that made me giggle out loud because I'm a dork and I <laughs> made me laugh first. <laughs> so, like this one, which I think was an early design also. I think that was the second design I ever had outside Hilarious. Of yeah. And I remember telling you, this is so clever. So if you're not watching us on the audio, excuse me, on the visual platform, this is a piece of bread that says, not today, gluten. Yep. <laughs> I am. I have a gluten allergy oh and gosh. it exists. Can I, can I cuss on here? Um, sure. It kicks my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a subtle it, curse word. Thank you. It Thank you. really does. Um, I think so that, that works. Um, I was a journalism major and I don't think that's considered one of the seven dirty words. So I think. Oh, amazing. Okay. Oh, great. I'll throw it in a ton more than. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that one's really funny. I, I, or honey, as you will, as you, as you said, uh -huh. um, I'm trying to think if we've, if I've got anything else, but. I always like to ask people. Yeah. So your one of your first couple of designs were the um what like it's hard and not today gluten. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink. Um, what is your favorite that you've designed so far? Oh my gosh. Um, it is hard to believe how many I've designed. I'm now up to. I think if you include the ones that are coming out from market, almost two hundred. Good for you. That's amazing. You. Maybe less, but I mean, around there, it's definitely growing, which is crazy. And it's only been about so, three and a half, three and a half years, I think, if I'm doing the math ish. Yes. Uh huh. Not, yeah, like, it'll, be, it'll be four in August, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's hard to pick just one, but let's see if I can think of like big launches that I had and pick one from every one of those. Uh, one of the original designs that same on the punny train. Uh, that does not get enough love, in my opinion, because it is one of my favorite things I've ever designed and stitched. Yes. It's holy cow. It cracks me up. So I don't know that we have that. I, oh, it's in the other room. I could go pull it. I have, so I have it's a, a it's, product of it. Is it spotted words? Yes. So it's a larger okay. piece that you can do as a pillow, a tray, a door sign, anything like a purse. Oh my gosh. How funny would that be as, as like a summer bag? Um, but it says in big block font, holy, and the holy is cow printed. And then underneath is a cow. <laughs> holy cow. It makes me giggle so much. Well, I grew up uh, west of Chicago, and that reminds me of Harry Carey as the, as the cover. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that might resonate with people. That's a good one. I love, I love that one. I love my Better on Broadway clutch. That was such a fun piece. I now take it everywhere. I'm very lucky to go to the theater a lot. And so um, I specifically designed that to fit a playbill. It's the width of a playbill. So- Oh, um, right. That's so smart. Thank you. So I, I turned it into that and I take it for every theater show and I always get they're like, where did you find that? Oh my gosh. Cause you know, it's other theater lovers going to see some shows. So that one was really special. Let's see. Um, 
Oh my gosh, there's so many that I other just... themes are Hanukkah, holiday. Um, you've just started your um kind of sign collection. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. I love all of those. Pieces. I can kind of see up here. You can see ho 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 and huh. um happy Hanukkah and um what does that say? Home for the holidays. Home, sweet home, sweet home for the holidays. Um, there's um a Valentine's Day one that you had some Halloween in there. Um, St. Patrick's that. Day oh. and Mardi Gras is coming this nice. at market. Yes, I have a place in my home that I one day would love to have like a little holiday door sign for every single holiday that I just switch out throughout the year. Um, those were, that's what those were designed for in mind. Um, zebra is a huge theme. You will see zebras everywhere in my collection. There's so many different patterns and colors and um, different versions of a zebra. My grandpa, who is, so my last name is Zygmunt, that's where, um, and he was, you know, the patriarchal Zygmunt, um, and that's where the nickname Ziggy started, was everyone called him Ziggy, and then they called my dad Ziggy, and now they call me Ziggy, um, but he was obsessed, I mean, absolutely obsessed with zebras. You would walk into his house, and they were, and it wasn't like, you know, in your face, but just the subtle little nods. <laughs> like small statues oh, and things yes yes <laughs> well statues and ties shoes oh uh gosh. I mean everything you can think of oh my gosh he had a set of like spoons that were, were like in the shape of a zebra at the t it was hysterical that's How awesome love them but he would it's bedemmed because from when they were little and they would answer the phone uh my dad they would say z uh zigman z is a zebra ah and that's where it's come from uh so he's passed that love on to me and he was one of my favorite people on this entire planet. So I'm always looking for ways to honor him. So zebras are definitely coming out in the Ziggy line. I love that. And the blue. So you've got, so blue is kind of your signature color, that bright blue. Yes, it is. And yes. if I recall, that's a Ziglet inspiration, is it not? That is a Ziglet inspiration. Talk yes. about that. I think that's so yeah. funny. Very clever um, of, a, of a triplet mom. She she really is. Uh, all the tips, tips and trades. If you guys have multiples out there, call me. I'll put you in connection. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes. Yeah, so when so I'm a triplet, as you said, all three girls. And even though we look absolutely nothing alike now, when we were born, we looked a lot alike, and my parents couldn't tell us apart. So they painted my big toe blue, mm -hmm. Julia's pink, and Lauren's green, <laughs> and color coded everything to keep us apart. So I clothes blue and green. Um, I mean the doctor charts, they would put stickers to know whose was whose our drinking cups to this day, you know, we're all adults and live on our own and live in different States. But to this day, our drinking cups at our mom's house are still blue, pink, and green birthday presents. were always blue, pink, and green. Um, if we, we just got, we finally convinced the third triplet, um, uh, the First triplet and second triplet had been on the third triplet's case for years. We finally just got a little, I don't know if you can see. Oh, stop. Is that a tattoo? Yeah. And we just got match, matching ones, blue, pink, and green. That's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yes, yeah, so I obviously am the blue Ziglet. Uh, Ziglet, <laughs> Zigman triplet is where that moniker came from. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am blue Ziglet. I will always be blue Ziglet. Um, <laughs> So therefore it became part of your, of your line. I love that. And now it's, and now it's, yeah, it's my brand. That's exactly what it is. You can't, it's awesome. you can't take the blue out of this girl. So I really, I do, I'm a very nostalgic person. And so I appreciate the fact that you've kind of used a lot of your own personal kind of experiences and um, kind of family life to bring into the line. Um, is there, you mentioned there's things coming this spring to um, KCN yep. uh, at market, which uh, if you're watching this, as when it launched, uh, it is, it is just mid March. And so I think we're only about 10 days away, not even maybe almost like a week or so away from market. Yeah, I think um, so. and I'm slipping in a spring break trip in there too. So I'm, I'm ripping and running here over here. I'm, but, saying, I'm uh -huh. worth, worth fitting a lot in. <laughs> we are, um, you know, the other thing I should mention really quick, since we're talking about KCN is I believe they're launching their first, uh, retreat. I don't know if it's their first retreat, but it's the first, I think they're calling it an artist retreat. Am I right uh -huh. about that? Yeah, you are. So um, many of those of you who are part of the line, who have artwork in the line, are you attending the retreat? The yes. retreat, excuse me. 
it's there. Yeah. It's the first time they're doing this. Like you said, we are so excited because so many of us, you know, we're all friends and we communicate through social media, but so many of us with being spread out throughout the country and having our own lives and families, we haven't met in person. So this is the first time that we are going to be able to actually meet and get together. So I believe there's 10, maybe 15, somewhere in between there of us designers all going. It will be there'll be a trunk for every single one of us there. So there's so much to shop, to shop from. Um, every single one of us will have a debut exclusive for this retreat. Oh, fun! And I'm so excited. This, speaking of favorite pieces, I think this is one of my top, I guess, five favorite pieces I've ever designed. Dang. And can only those who are attending the retreat purchase it? Just for that weekend, but they will all be added to the line. Oh, so, so don't worry. Don't worry. You'll you'll be able to get your hands. Hey, okay, I don't want to miss out. I don't like FOMO. I don't like I FOMO. <laughs> um, me neither. I'm afraid of So how great will that be? Because you might find um some collaborations among yourselves that might yes, pop totally. up too. You know, oh, I like this and oh, let's design this together. Yes. Or that yes. that sounds really That's, cool. And that was another reason why I was so excited um to join KCN because a lot of the designers and I have a very similar aesthetic, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, very graphic very bold, very colorful, Mm -hmm. um, whimsical, like you said. And so I feel like we all naturally gravitate towards each other already. So that's Mm going to be some amazing um, collabs in the making. Speaking of, um, I I hope you don't mind I mentioned this, but speaking of, you know, in the industry, um, it it kind of happens so that, you know, like those of us kind of who come into the needlepoint industry at the same time sort of connect with one another yeah. um, or, you know, like Melissa and I have developed a friendship. I know that you had some kind of early sort of support and friends, and I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but um, you've got a couple of besties in the industry. And uh, I wonder if you might talk a little bit about that, how that came I about. I do. I do. I am so lucky to have found this industry at the time that I did in COVID because everybody at the time, you know, we were starving for socialization and Mm -hmm. type of friend group that we could have. And so I fell into needlepoint and I don't even, I think it was Instagram where I saw it, but I found a stitch group, um, a zoom, a stitch zoom that 20 plus people I think would log on to twice a week at this point. Cause I'm again, we had nothing else to do. (laughs) Right. 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 And we just stitched from I think 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday and (laughs) friends and I still I remember um I mean we knew everything about each other what our partners were up to what our siblings were up to what the kids were up to um at the time I was (laughs) I was still um dating and going through the sometimes the traumatic oh yeah traumatic process that is. And I still remember the very first people I told about, um, my, my partner is our, was these stitch group people. (laughs) So we still, we still laugh about that, but, um, I believe what you were referring to are through this stitch zoom, I met two of my current best friends, Rachel of Rachel Berry designs and Lucy of Mopsy designs. And through this community and social media, crazy enough to admit, um, they have become truly two of my best friends ever. And I yeah. am so lucky to have them. I, it just reminds me, you, I know you, I knew you, that story. And so thank you for yeah. sharing it, but it yeah. reminds me how important it is for us to be open-minded in the needlepoint community, because we have such an awesome um, uh, gift of an art and a craft that we all love. And so it's easy to sort of connect with people um, and I, I also wanted to laud Annie because she attends the St. Louis Stitch Club often, and she comes to the book club that we have here at the Needlepoint Clubhouse. And I think um, it's people like her and, you know, all of us who are willing to kind of, sh- you know, share our time with one another that we've been able to kind of help people in our community. And I know communities all over the country um, with this craft. And I think that that's such an important part of it. So, um, so I appreciate your uh willingness to participate when we you know Annie just came oh, thank you. it's my guest. favorite oh I yeah, love it. it is we missed you last night at book club but we'll let it I, oh I have a story about why I missed it oh I was so mad <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing you oh. <laughs> um but I kind of wanted Annie to be there because we talked about the spectacular and I was like this is a theater thing and Annie might have information anyway oh my I'm gosh just, I was you trouble. so ready for this book I know I know there was a tornado um in St. Louis last night so we were if 
you were unaware and that's it kept me from coming to book club yeah bummer 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 but anyway i i do um i i just wanted to mention that you've been an active member of a lot of the communities that at least i'm involved with and i i appreciate that so oh thank you thank you it's Um, it's been such a saving grace for me i love it and i need with obviously i'm so busy all the time and i feel like i don't get a lot of just me time to just breathe and relax and this community to be able to just i could come in truly for two hours at a book club and it fulfills me from mm-hmm. like, this is so, it's just the best. It's the best feeling to it's have fun. Support. I should also mention that you're working on your master's degree as well. Isn't that I right? Am. I am. I so, am. Girl, you've got a lot going on. So I'm yeah, sure that you're yeah. using both your stitching and your painting as um, ways to kind of relax and decompress. You know, yeah. something we haven't talked about yet is, and something I like to ask uh, designers is um, about their actual physical design process. So some people paint something on a piece of paper and, you know, trace through it and kind of work through it that way. Some people go right to the um, program, um, Mm -hmm. you know, on, on an iPad or what do you, do you, can you share with us a little bit of your process? Sure. Uh, My process has evolved as I have, as a designer, I started doing um, what you said in the beginning, I would sketch directly onto a canvas um, and then I would stitch on top of it, but I mean, truly in pencil and I would almost treat it like a cross stitch and not realize that you should be going through certain holes and all this stuff. Right, right. Um, and then as I learned more about the industry and more about the art, I was able to really kind of fine and refine the details because that's something I, I take pride in now is all the details that I can get into um, a color scheme or a certain design. And now I still sketch, but I'll sketch if I have an idea, um, like in a little notebook, and then I play around with it on the computer and I'll spend my main amount of designing time on Mac stitch, which is the computer program you were referring to. And Mm -hmm. I do that on my computer. Sometimes if I have my iPad available, I'll sketch on my iPad and then I can upload that sketch to um, max stitch and then kind of tweak from there. Digitize it, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Digitize it, which is super helpful. So I do a lot of the actual shading process there just so I can get the best color match to the thread itself. Mm -hmm. And then I'll paint a master and then stitch from there. But that's, that's the usual, but sometimes it, it depends on the piece because then there are some times where I think of something like, oh my God, this would look so good in this thread. And this would look so good in um, this colorway. And so I'll, I'll think of the finished product first before going. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I think it depends. There, there are definitely some that is the, I think more traditional route, but then like my better on Broadway clutch, for instance, I knew I wanted something that I could take to the theater. Mm-hmm. And so the size is what started that design Got it. and I pieced it from there. So kind of just depends on the, on the um, canvas I'm doing at the time. So how did you develop um, your ability to paint? Did you already, had you worked with acrylics before or did you get some advice from a friend or how did that work? Um, all of the above. Yeah. My family is incredibly artsy. So okay. we, my mom is an artist and a painter herself and my dad is a musician. So I, was very lucky that both of those things were passed down to me. And it's, I grew up with it. I mean, I think one of my favorite smells is like spray paint that, you know, (laughs) supposed to put like a mask over your face because it's toxic, but I just grew around it so much of my mom just doing, you know, she safely did it. No huffing. (laughs) It sounds so bad. I promise I'm not doing any of that. But um, I was surrounded by it so much when I was younger of my mom just, I mean, constantly covered head to toe in her hairline, in her clothes, in the cats were covered. I mean, there was just paint everywhere and music was always playing. So that just naturally seeped into all three of my sisters and I um, and just loving art. So I've definitely played around with paint and art since I was very, very little and it, yeah, it kind of came naturally to me. Yeah. I think, I think that, I mean, it's not rocket science, but I do think that there, I mean, I'm, I can't paint to save my life. And I think yeah. there's, 
you know, knowing what the right kind of um, materials are and how to dilute sure. the paint and doing all that. So that's, yes. I guess, um, yes. I was just curious. It sounds like it was yeah. a little bit of trial and error, maybe. It definitely, definitely was. I say, yeah. I said that I was natural. That does not mean I was like, oh my gosh, I picked up a pencil or a paintbrush and I was amazing. naturally painting. No, not paintbrush. at all. Right, right. right. Uh, lots of trial and error. But because I grew up with all of the art around me, I've always loved color and I could appreciate color. And I've, always been able to see what goes well with something else. Got you. So that really helped translate to canvas as well. For sure. So I think kind of the last thing I want to ask you is um, what's coming up. So I know that something in your personal life is coming up that I happen to be very excited for. And I'm not sure if you are willing to share many details on that, but uh, Annie might, might or might not be acting locally this summer. Maybe, maybe. I uh, <laughs> Yes, so I am so excited. I, we, we barely even got into this, but Me as Megan said, I'm currently teaching. Um, I'm a first year elementary school teacher. I teach drama at two different schools in the St. Louis Public School District. Which, um, bravo, thank you. Not a lot of people are willing to take that um, step uh, in a in a in a city, inner city school. So I think that yeah, yeah, yeah. Your it, character, so. it's been, it's been a wild ride. That's for sure. I'm learning so much every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids crack me up. They are truly, it's, you never know what you're going to get every single morning. It's, well, it's, with kids in general, that's for sure. Seriously, with me. kids in general, but especially um, this. Bravo specific. teachers. That's how I have to say. <laughs> yes. Bravo everybody. Yeah. Um, but because I started teaching and I started my master's, 2023 was the first year that I hadn't performed since I was nine years old, which was, yeah, <laughs> it was really, really hard to be honest. So I am so excited uh, to share that I will be back on stage this summer. I am not quite allowed to say in what yet. Okay. Uh, well, that's I know. all right. Megan's dying to share. I promise I'll make a big announcement. And I don't know all the details. I just happen to know that she might be making an appearance at a pretty big stage here in St. Louis. So we're just pretty excited about that for you. Thank and there's you. a lot of great stages here in St. Louis. So there are. It's a, very, it's a sneaky, sneaky little theater scene, but it's, it is. Oh, it's good. It is. It's so good. And so um, after that, because to me, that's a big announcement, but I'm sure you're going to continue to design for uh, your, yeah. your line. And do you have any sort of theme? that you're wanting to share with us related to kind of what you're designing or uh you'll definitely see more door signs or okay. I call them I call them door signs again they are so I think they're great and versatile and you can do so many things with them but you'll definitely see more holiday door signs you will see I'm hoping to do more family oriented stuff with um the new teaching experience that I'm having I'm really going okay. to lean into um things that'll be great for young families or for students or teachers or things like that. You'll see a lot of those. Oh, I do happen to love that design that says it has, it's a rainbow with teacher. Uh -huh. Doesn't it say uh -huh. number one or teacher or something? It, on it? it just says teacher, but the, the Post. rainbow, there's like a pencil and, um, school supplies. Which like I that. want to encourage anybody who wants to make a teacher gift to get one of these self-finishing acrylic boxes and do a little yeah. teacher for the, I want to see like, um, I love you know, it. Scissors and a ruler. And I think it would be such yeah. a sweet thing. But Thank anyway, you. I, I love, love I love that design. But go ahead. So other in inspired um, by your education experience. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And then I'm I've had some interest that has been shared with me of um my personal theater pieces that I've created. People are kind of want to see those in the line. So you will uh, see some of those translated. Awesome. As well. I love it. Well, that's Thank really great. You. So Thank is you. there anything that we haven't covered? I, I, there's so much. Oh gosh. You and your career. Is there anything that you wish that you, you had a chance to share with your adoring public? <laughs> adoring fans. Um, no, <laughs> um, no, I think I, this has been so fun and it's been great. Cause again, you know, we are, I'm very lucky that the clubhouse is my LNS. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'll say that. I'm so lucky and to have a, a personal relationship with you as well. So you, I think you did a good job of saying, well, here, I know this person. <laughs> it is more, I have to be honest. It is a little more difficult when you interview <laughs> someone that you happen to know uh, a little bit more about than others. Sure. But uh, because I, you know, I know the story, but I'm happy. I'm glad you were here to tell it. Um, okay. I'm going to say a couple of things. So Annie's, um, designs can be found with KCN. Yes. 
Kansas City Needlepoint Designers. Mm -hmm. um, they also represent her on Instagram here and there, but of course they have a lot of people to rep. So you can also find Annie on Instagram at Ziggy Stitches. Is that I'm right? Ziggy Stitches. I am also now on TikTok. Oh, uh, well, wow. Wow. Look, at, you. Look so at me fancy. go. Oh gosh, it, that that's been a learning curve. But uh, Point Clubhouse is on TikTok too, and I had to enlist the help of a younger person. Let me just tell you, I I I did too. My family, <laughs> my family calls me Granny Annie for many a reasons. That's one of them. Uh, but you can find me, um, yes, Instagram Ziggy Stitches, TikTok is Ziggy dot Stitches, and uh, www.ziggystitches.com is currently in the middle and almost done with a revamp. So by market time, you will be able to see a full catalog of everything you can order through your LNS. And Annie, uh, I hate to put you on the spot with this question, yeah. but I'm actually curious myself. Um, sure. If anybody's interested in following your acting, yeah. How do, they, how do they find out where you're performing or where you might be? Or do you have a, a, an acting Instagram page or do you have? Yeah. Instagram? Yeah. My, um, my personal Instagram is just at Annie Zygman and I definitely share a lot of my acting journeys is there. I, I've been again, so touched by the needlepoint community and all of these incredible people. So you guys often ask for me to put my theater stuff on my Ziggy Stitches account as well. So for anything super big, like the one that Megan was alluding to, I'll definitely put it on there as well. Yeah, um, yeah go follow Annie Zygman as well if you want to see um, me turn into absolutely crazy people on stage. Because I, <laughs> I guarantee I don't, I don't live in the normality. I'm in the extremes a lot. So you'll, you'll see a lot of humor. I think, I <laughs> think that, that is, is awfully fun. It is fun um, to learn more about other needle pointers and follow their journeys. Carolyn Eisman is one who we, it comes into yeah. the shop and we've been following her as um, Hairspray. What's the lead character's huh? name? I can't think of um, it. Tracy. Tracy, Tracy Turnblatt. Turnblatt. That's right. Uh, so to me, that's, it's just fun because a lot of times those of us who are into these crafts are also into the performing arts as well. So thanks yes, for sharing that with us. That's a great surprise. I've been yeah. loving that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so thanks, Annie. So follow her on Instagram. Um, be sure to be following Pointing It Out podcast here on YouTube or whichever audio platform you have found us on. And we appreciate you watching. Um, and I think that covers it, girlfriend. So uh, you have a great weekend and thank you for your time. And we'll talk thank to you, you hopefully real soon. Oh, yeah. I'll be over at the shop. I'll come by. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Bye now. Bye, y'all. Thank you.